Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Vendo Velocity. We're happy that you're joining us today. Um, if you haven't logged in or tuned in to Vendo Velocity before, Vendo Velocity is your weekly live podcast that discusses all of the latest strategies and best practices on Amazon, Walmart.com, and TikTok Shop. So, with me here, I have a first timer to the podcast. I'm not sure how he has escaped um, from joining me <laughs> all of this time. Uh, but Trevor Jackson, who is a superstar on my team here, one of our um, account strategists who it seems like has been here almost a year now. But Yeah, about a year. Yeah, going on a year now. <laughs> Perfect. Well, Trevor, if you can go ahead and just introduce yourself, um, that would be great. Yeah, so my name is Trevor. I've been at Vendo for, for going on a year, almost a year. Prior to that, I was working for other 3P agencies, so I've been selling on Amazon for about four to five years um, now. Uh, really happy to be on, and thanks for inviting me, Delaney. Yes, so happy to have you, Trevor. Trevor has a lot of great insights, and as you'll see very quickly here, a ton of great knowledge just within the space. So um, excited to dive in here. First and foremost, what the topic we're going to be covering today is all of the newest updates that Amazon has released. And if you're unfamiliar with this time of year um, for Amazon, typically right before their Prime Day takes place, um, they will start to release a new, a lot of new updates leading into their larger event in September called Amazon Accelerate. Um, Amazon Accelerate takes place in Seattle. And it's basically where Amazon invites all of the sellers over to hear about what's new um, within the Amazon space and what the specific platform updates are that we can expect to come down the line. So we've seen a decent amount of new refreshes that we're excited to dive into. Um, first and foremost, on the marketing standpoint, um, we want to talk a little bit about price discounts. To shed some light on what price discounts are, Basically, what Amazon is now allowing you to do directly um, as a promotion almost is to set price discounts for specific ASINs. And you can do this on the ASIN level. Um, and what will happen is it will be a strike through price. So you'll be able to show 20, 25 percent off and you could commit to only a certain number of units. So um, previously, as we know, there might be different list price hacks that you can implement on the back end of the listing to try to get that strike through to already occur. Price discounts is very similar, but now you can only offer that if you'd like to, let's say, 200 units, 100 units. That way you're not discounting every single unit that you're selling to the customer, but you're able to have much more control over your margins. So Trevor, let's talk about this strategy a little bit more. Obviously, now um, Amazon has a lot of different discounting types when we think about coupons, brand tailored promotions. How do you expect price discounts to fall into the mix as far as how sellers will be leveraging it? With the new way you can set up these discounts or these promotions, it just gives the brand a little bit more control. Obviously, I think coupons and, and best deals still gets you additional you know traffic and insight which are traffic from from deal pages and coupon pages so in that aspect it's preferable but there's a lot of instances like for example having overstocked inventory and trying to sell down right where you you really just want to try and get rid of the inventory that you're overpaying for because it's been on amazon too long this is an instance that it applies to it right so you can go ahead and list those 200 units that have been there for more than six months sell down get rid of it as quickly as you can and still be there in addition to that if you want more control and you want to make sure you don't accelerate a stock out um, you can do that as well. So you can set the amount of inventory that you want as a promotion, right? Leaving some safety inventory there just in case you sell down faster than expected, allowing you to replenish um, in time. Because we all know one of the worst things you can do in running a deal is stocking out and losing the momentum there. So in those aspects, that control aspect, it definitely helps a lot. Yeah, that's a great point, Trevor. And as we know, Amazon's starting to revamp deal pages a bit. So it's going to be interesting to see how these price discounts fall into the mix, especially now if we think of things like coupons, which are not um, allowed to be an evergreen strategy, um, or they can be an evergreen strategy, but you can't launch products with coupons now. So uh, technically not evergreen until um, you've built up enough, enough sales history there, it's going to be interesting to see how um, brands start to play with these price discounts because we know sales prices and getting that red badge is often a strategy that different sellers employ. Um, but just uh, another discounting strategy to the mix here. 
Um, another one that we wanted to talk about was low inventory fees. So Trevor, why don't you give our um, audience a bit of context into what are these low inventory fees and how you um, anticipate that that's going to impact sellers? Yeah, so it's just another fee that Amazon's stacking on uh, for sellers. And, and what they're trying to do is incentivize sellers to have a higher weeks of cover, you know, have more inventory and reduce the chance of stockouts. Um, so they're rewarding sellers who have more than a month of cover by not charging. Or I, I, in other words, they're, instead of rewarding, they're punishing sellers that are keep lean inventory supplies. So if you have less than four weeks of cover um, at the time and the point of sale, Amazon's going to charge you a low inventory fee or an additional fee per unit sold um, if you're light. So it's it's an additional fee that you can avoid by just planning better and, and having stronger inventory um, levels consistently in, in your pipeline. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And I think for the, the update that Amazon had announced, it's actually effective as of today, but they were giving brands a little bit of a credit for these low inventory fees that they incurred. So previously, uh, that date was April 1st, where Amazon was implementing these low inventory fees. Uh, as of today, now that credit's going to be going away. So very important that you're understanding, one, uh, what ASIN specifically are going to be incurring this low inventory fee, and then two, how that impacts your margins. And then as Trevor just spoken about, from a price discount standpoint, um, you probably don't want to be running uh, price discounts on anything that already has. Um, or is incurring that low inventory fee just to further protect your margins because then you're going to be paying an additional fee uh, to fund the discount as well as the um, having low inventory on it. So uh, great points there, Trevor. And then let's talk a little bit about Amazon posts. Um, so something that's come out over like the last few months is being able to specifically boost your Amazon posts uh, through sponsored brands. So basically just taking your Amazon posts and being able to run sponsored brands against them. So Trevor, what are your thoughts overall, first and foremost, on Amazon posts? Should all brands be leveraging them? Is there a certain type of brand that should be leveraging them? And what does it help with overall? Yeah, so great question. Um, I've always had a little bit of a hiccup with Amazon posts because the visibility factor has always been an issue, right? You can, it, the, I always recommend it because it's free, right? It's something that you can do very small uplift. You're gonna get additional impressions and clicks. Um, the uh, visibility of it isn't great. And so this is something that you can do with your posts uh, uh, to help boost visibility and boost traction. So I'm very curious to see how uh, my brands will perform by, by boosting our posts through sponsored brands. Um, definitely uh, more social media influencer type brands will perform a little bit better with Amazon posts. But overall, it's something I'd recommend for all brands as long as you have the bandwidth to do it because it is free and it's free traffic to your listings and free impressions. Yeah. No, that's a great point. And I think with sponsored brands, we've obviously seen the evolution there with video um, and is definitely just a different um, strategy that a lot of brands are going to be leaning into more of in addition to sponsored products is how are we pushing vertical video, et cetera, uh, with the emphasis on UGC now that's going to be pivotal that you have a comprehensive sponsored brand strategy. So definitely worth a test to see if maybe you have a few posts that are performing well or even specific posts on Instagram, which you might've brought over uh, to um, Amazon that are working well and testing those to see how they perform as ads. And again, as Trevor said, just, just more content there. Um, the next thing we wanna talk about is a manage all inventory dashboard, uh, which is currently in beta. So as you guys have probably seen, if you look on your manage inventory page, there's a new view that's available to you. Trevor, why don't you give our audience a bit of a glimpse into what some of these updates look like um, and what your initial thoughts are on them as well? So I haven't dug into it too much. I've seen it in passing and I haven't fully implemented it on my side, but at a glance from what I've seen, it just tells you a lot more um, at, at a glance, right? So, you know, in the current or the the original manage, manage all inventory page, it's just you have to click into a lot of different SKUs to see details around, you know, where the inventory is or, or click on drop downs to see, you know, what's in processing, what's in transfer. It just gives you a, a bigger snapshot and it tells you a lot more at a glance. So definitely a, a better beta um, that I'm going to try and implement a little bit more, but definitely tells you a lot more. Yeah, totally agree there. And then I think because it is so new, we're still playing around with it a bit. Um, but the bigger things are that um, you can now see all of your variations grouped together, but it's going to order that by sales revenue. 
um, and from highest to lowest if you'd like it to. So now, as we know, for these brands with massive catalog sizes, like let's talk about hundreds, thousands of SKUs, it's very difficult sometimes to see, okay, where are my priority items within this? And then on top of that, like if I have a listing suppression, et cetera, which SKUs do I need to make sure I'm prioritizing? Well, now that it's an order from highest to lowest in terms of revenue generation, uh, you're going to be able to tackle those really small issues that might have gotten lost before, even though they're for your hero items, because you're able to prioritize those within the view. So um, just different ways in which Amazon's making it a little bit easier for us to uh, review our inventory, review our products in general, and then tackle any issues that might occur there. Um, another one that we talked about last week, Trevor, was just variation specifically. And I think this was something we talked about on Vendo Velocity last year because um, we had seen that Amazon was starting to crack down on large, large sellers um, who you know, were trying to manipulate their variations a little bit. And in doing so, they were actually getting sued um, by Amazon for that. Um, and these are not small sellers. They're actually some of them being on the vendor central side of the business, which is interesting enough. Um, but Trevor, maybe you could speak to a little bit on what your thoughts are on that. Like when you're creating different variations, is that something where, you know, there's a little bit of room to play with um, variations or would you recommend really remaining uh, and having a strong stance on everything you needs to be unified and literally just the same product if it exists within a variation it's a great question um i would definitely lean towards the more conservative side um when you ask if there's room there's definitely room for interpretation especially with some variation themes you know like style variations and things like that where it's a left a little to the imagination and it's not just like a color or, or, or a size specifically where you can justify doing some kind of variation but Amazon is cracking down. We have seen it with many other very large brands to the point where if there's any ambiguity, Amazon can potentially flag that listing and shut down the listing as a whole, your entire account. I would recommend staying on the safer side and just sticking with Amazon's policies. Um, there are going to be those sellers that you're competing with that are going to be using those variations to manip manipulate reviews and get reviews to carry over to new products that shouldn't have those reviews. Um, but always put it on the safer side, stay on Amazon's good side is my recommendation rather than uh, uh, run the risk of getting your account shut down. Totally agree, um, especially from the standpoint of if they do take the most severe action, as Trevor had said, and deactivate your account fully, you could go days, if not weeks of that loss in revenue, which is more than likely not going to be made up from what, um, you're, what you're generating through building those variations. So uh, definitely a little room for flexibility there, but for the most part, you'll want to stay within Amazon's terms of service, of course. Um, virtual bundles, Trevor, I want to just get your thoughts on what you think about some of the newer updates around virtual bundles. We've seen more recently Amazon launching things like complementary product sets and showing virtual bundles in different aspects of the PDP. It looks like they're really trying to push for this increase in average order value upsell across the listings and giving sellers an avenue to do that. So can you speak a little bit about um, what are these changes that we've seen? And do you think that they're beneficial or um, what were your thoughts before the update versus your thoughts now? Yeah. So virtual bundles was kind of a strategy just to help push competitors products down down the detail page on, on branded search, right? And just to make sure you can defend that space really they were very, very hard to find and didn't drive a lot of traction or, or make much of a difference at first. Now what we're seeing Amazon is doing is they're taking your actual listing and putting that very, you know, that bundle with it on the actual listing, boosting visibility. So you can see there's your product, there's your listing, there's a variation and below it, you'll see bundles with, you know, have all the bundles listed there. So making that consumer, dis that the, the journey so much easier for the customer to find the bundle and be able to purchase it much easier is actually very beneficial. And we are seeing a lift. Um, and the AOV overall for products that are uh, on virtual bundle, just because the visibility of those virtual bun bundles has increased by so much. So love what Amazon's doing here, focusing more on just increasing the AOV, brand loyalty, um, and cross-selling and making it so much easier for the customer to find these virtual bundles. Yeah, that's a great point. And then on top of that as well, like we're now seeing that Amazon's creating some virtual bundles for vendors. Um, like by themselves, they're creating some of these bundles. So it definitely seems like it's a priority for Amazon to 
um, to be pushing this initiative internally. And so we'll see how they continue to expand upon that there. Um, another one of the more exciting updates that finally was released last week um, and it has been being talked about for months, um, is that consumers can now connect their Amazon and their Instagram or Meta accounts, allowing them to check out directly on social. So basically, if you're on your Instagram, you're scrolling through your feed, and then you see an Amazon listing, if you click into that listing, you can go uh, directly, it will take you to that Amazon detail page, even though it's just an Amazon post. Um, on your Instagram. So it will go into your Amazon detail page. Um, and then from there, you could easily check out. So what this is allowing us to unlock is uh, hopefully greater attribution coming from both Instagram and Meta. And right now we know that um, this is a little bit muddy as far as how we can measure performance between, let's say, your sponsored product ads, your sponsored display ads, and then DSP on and off Meta. Um, right now, that isn't very seamless and you can't really see the customer journey there. But now if we're going to have the ability to potentially, you know, create lookalike audiences from Meta because we have all of that attribution um, and we're able to see all of the touch points across these different campaigns, which now include um, Meta and include Instagram, we're just going to be able to further optimize for the correct ad type format um to meet our overall goals so hopefully this leads to incremental performance and i think that um overall external traffic is going to continue to be an important uh factor to consider but trevor maybe just give our audience a little bit of a glimpse into why external traffic is so important and um when and if that's always as an evergreen strategy or are there sp specific time periods that brands should be taking advantage of uh, building external traffic? Yeah, great question. Um, so external traffic is weighted very heavily in Amazon's algorithm. I mean, some of our studies and indications is so it can be as much as three times greater. So the equivalent of driving traffic to Amazon externally and converting is three times more, has three times more of an impact um, then them searching it through it organically. Amazon wants to get as much traffic uh, um, to your, to their platform as they can, and they want to leverage us to be able to do it. They're even incentivizing, you know, seller central accounts to drive traffic externally by offering that 10% referral bonus, where you get 10% back, reducing essentially that commission from 15% to 5% um, that you pay. Um, overall, great strategy, something that should be done across the board consistently. Um, where I would say it has the largest impact is is at the start when you're launching a product during that honeymoon period. Um, very, very important to accelerate your rank um, in, in your category and on those specific high volume keywords and, and driving external traffic to those listings really, really helps with that and getting those products ramped up as quickly as you can. Yeah, no, Trevor, I know we were talking about this last week, so let's give a little bit of a, a brand shout out here to a brand that's really starting to crush it from a external traffic standpoint, and that's micro ingredients. So we've seen that micro ingredients, if you use uh, different tools like FastMoss or Calo data for TikTok shop management, that, you know, they're reported to be doing as much as like $2 million per week on TikTok shop. Um, Trevor, I know we have a few brands that sell in similar categories to micro ingredients, but what are we seeing in the category as a whole because of that uh, external traffic that they're generating from, let's say, TikTok? Categories growing. So not only are you seeing the external traffic drive to Amazon, to TikTok shop, but people, customers who go to Amazon are actually going in and searching for non branded keywords related to that category. So I think micro ingredients, one of the top was, would be the multi collagen, so the multiple forms of collagen. You can see those keywords have actually taken off exponentially just in the last couple of months. So the lift that you're seeing is not just branded, it's also having an impact on non branded, which is why Amazon prioritizes it so much. Yeah. And I want to hold on that for a second because what Trevor said is important because I think a lot of the times uh, what sellers envision is, okay, fine. Uh, the external traffic that I drive is going to just have a branded impact where my branded search is going to increase. But at the end of the day, if they're looking for my brand, they're looking for my brand. So from a brand awareness standpoint, yes, you're going to see that impact to branded search, but you're also going to be growing the category as a whole. So as Trevor said, for these top keywords within category, we're seeing that go to tens of thousands 
now after before it maybe had less than 10,000 searches per month for some of these keywords or even less than 5,000 let's say where now they're completely building up that search and um, consumers are actually searching for the non-branded keyword rather than just searching for like micro ingredients so again that's where SEO becomes very important um, as far as what specific keywords are you highlighting what specific keywords are important for you to be ranked on page one and then Trevor maybe if you could just add some context into how you as an account strategist are tracking some of those trends on let's say a weekly or monthly basis to understand maybe different product opportunities or really just what's trending in the space yeah um, so utilizing you know keyword platforms like helium 10 just to continually track and see what's ticking off amazon has some great reports as well in product opportunity explorer you can track the growth of overall search terms um keywords like the ones that we indicated related to um these external traffic driving campaigns from micro ingredients um that's something that we found very quickly where these non-branded keywords have 15 20x just in the last month month and a half um, and what we're able to do with that is react accordingly just because a lot of those customers are defaulting to the micro ingredients listing non-branded search volume is increasing significantly and we can go in and kind of piggyback off of that the traffic that these other sellers are or these other brands are driving and so what we've been able to do is find ways to incorporate those seo keywords that are seeing significant increases into our copy implement ranking campaigns with advertising to see if we can rank well and actually grab some of that share from a non-branded standpoint so yeah it's something yeah. That we have to do very consistently weekly monthly um but if you're the first to to react and see those kinds of lists you're going to be the ones that you're going to capitalize and see the growth exactly and i want to touch on what trevor said because as he said it's not just advertising related it's also um just search engine optimization in general so how are you capitalizing on some of these trends more organically so that um, Amazon's algorithm is deeming you as more relevant for these given search terms and therefore your rank is increasing on uh, page one for them. Yes, advertising is going to be important to make sure that you hold on the top of page one and are ultimately also getting sales through ads so that the algorithm deems you as further relevant, but also very important that so your ads serve to the correct consumers uh, that you have those top keywords within your listing itself. So uh, that's a great point, Trevor. And then the last thing I want to talk about is just Amazon recognition. So um, a few weeks ago, maybe a couple months now, uh, we started to talk about a few of the tools through AWS, like Amazon Comprehend, which is more specifically used for uh, different keyword opt opportunities and just understanding um, different sentiments that Amazon's algorithm is picking up about your product specifically, whether positive or negative, um, and how different keywords are interacting with that algorithm, which will help with all things Q&A related, uh, listing related in all sense for titles, bullets, etc. But now we're turning this to be a little bit more visual, utilizing Amazon, comp uh, Amazon recognition. And what Amazon recognition allows you to do is upload images directly to Amazon recognition within AWS and it will output for you what it thinks the product exactly is and some of the more important keywords that it's grabbing from these images itself. And then you could plug them into other tools to further understand what AI is specifically thinking your product is. Um, so Trevor, speak a little bit about this because as we start to see Amazon evolve, I think everyone often thinks that everything is keyword related and it's all about titles, bullets, um, and just SEO in general, how important is that image stack and and why is it that important? Yeah, so studies have shown that like 90% uh, of customers look at every single image before deciding whether to purchase. And then when asked about SEO content, bullets and stuff, customers tend to skim rather than read thoroughly. So that image stack is, is very, very important. Customers are actually moving to be more and more visual than, than less literal and then actually reading the content in depth. And that's why you see on Amazon so many infographics where there's a lot of written copy speaking to the benefits in the images rather than just images of the product. Um, this and Amazon recognition is just a great way to get AI's opinion and, and give you an indication of what we're not seeing. Sometimes as the, as the brand owner or as someone who's working on the brand, you get a little bit too close and, and it's hard to kind of take a step back and see what other customers might be seeing. And, and this tool really, really helps with that. No, totally agree, Trev. And what about A-B testing? Like, let's say Amazon recognition spits out something completely different from probably what you're aiming for, or just in general, what is your view on how often uh, brands should be A-B testing? 
what sort of tools would you recommend they use if they wanted to start off with an A-B test? Um, and what should you look for in the data to really show you um, what's going to convert better, et cetera? Yeah. So there's a software called PicFu if you're looking for really, really quick um, results from A-B testing, which is kind of a survey platform. And so you can kind of plug a few images in, for example, and see what customers like the best and the reasoning why there's like ranking um, surveys that you can do. So that's great. Um, Amazon's man manager experiments is also just really, really great. I, I recommend doing this as much as you can. You know, you, you want the data to, to, to back what you're actually doing. So Amazon's going to take those assets that you that you have and, and plug and play them in different times in different scenarios. And they're going to see which one actually performs better, what you're going to want to pay close attention to. Obviously, is that conversion rate. But the click through rate is also very important, especially for main images where you're going to be listed next to hundreds of other companies you know, competitor products, how are you going to differentiate yourself and get customers to click on your listing versus others? So looking at that click through rate, looking through at the conversion is really going to tell you what, what works better. Perfect. Yep. I'll leave it at that because Trevor summarized it perfectly there. Um, well, Trevor, thank you again for joining so much. I, I want to give just our audience a, a little bit of parting advice from you. Um, obviously you manage a large book of business here at Vendo and you've seen a lot from, brand to brand um what is your biggest advice for someone selling on amazon be proactive right the ones that are going to be the most proactive in, in diving into the campaign your advertising campaigns on a daily basis diving into search category category search and trends and things like that are the ones that are going to win at the end of the day um, you're competing with a lot of people and, and those incremental changes that you make to your pdp and to your strategies um, based on what you find in your research is what's going to help you win. And, and so um, Amazon is not the platform. You just load your products and let it run. You, you, you got to be proactive and then continue looking at, at, at your listings as a whole and, and the category to see where it's going. There we go. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, everyone, for joining today's episode of Vendo Velocity. If you have any questions, you could reach out to us directly, Delaney at VendoCommerce.com and Trevor.Jackson at VendoCommerce.com. Um, but excited to see you guys back next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everybody.